All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Shai, Plan Section Chief. This is the transition meeting for the bond incident. Um, what we'll go ahead and do, if I can have everyone silence your cell phones, radios, and take any unnecessary conversations outside. We can go ahead and get started with some introductions. Again, Dave Shai, Plan Section Chief, Incident Management Team 4. Start over here. Steve Kaufman, Public Information Officer at Cal Fire Incident Management Team 4. Good morning, Dave Pender, Liaison Officer at Cal Fire Team 4. Good morning, Deb Farrell, Safety Officer IMT 4. Good morning, Mara Jaeger, Finance Section Chief, IMT 4. Kay Garcia, Finance Section Chief, Team 4. Good morning, Jock Bischoff, Operations Section Chief, Team 4. Good morning, Matt Wright, Logistics Section Chief, IMT 4. Uh, good morning, Eddie Moore, Deputy Incident Commander, IMT 4. Good morning, Daryl Laws, uh, Incident Commander Training for Team 4. Uh, good morning, Dave Russell, Incident Commander, Cal Fire IMT 4. Good morning, Barry Owens, Riverside Unit Line Officer. Good morning, Glenn Barley, Assistant Region Chief, Southern Region. Good morning, Daryl Vance, uh, representing the Forest Service. Good morning, Cameron Daniels, Plan Section Chief for IMT. Good morning, Steve Hurdle, Safety Officer for the Orange County IMT. Mike Peter, Operations Section Chief with the Orange County IMT. Good morning, Tang Nguyen, Information Officer for uh, Orange County IMT. Uh, no morning, uh, Richard Ventura, Logistics Section for uh, IMT. Good morning, Bill Bingham, Law Liaison with the uh, local IMT. Good morning, Ron Roberts, Orange County Fire, uh, be the incoming IC for the Orange County team. Good morning, Kenny Dossie, Assistant Chief, Orange County Fire. Good morning, Jim Ryan, Assistant Chief of Logistics and the Finance Section Chief. Good morning, Wen Yao Wong, Finance Section Chief, Orange County IMT. Brian Fennessy, Orange County Fire Authority Fire Chief. Good morning, Shane Sherwood, Liaison Officer, Orange County Incident Management Team. All right, good morning. If we go ahead and get started with the operational update. Operations. Sorry, we're still trying to work on the map, but if we can go ahead and get started. Good morning, Josh Bischoff, Day Operations for the, the bond incident. As we work on the map, uh, the fire was broken up into two branches and six divisions. Uh, the western portion of the fire, we had great success where it ran into the Santiago Canyon fire from just five weeks ago. Uh, we were able to validate all of that line along the Santiago Canyon fire, then up to the 241. Uh, this is all in branch five. Uh, moving up along Silverado Canyon Road from Santiago Canyon Road up at Silverado Canyon Road, all of that line was constructed and put in. Uh, up Going up Silverado Canyon Road behind all of the residents, we had direct hand line, and we were able to mop up and patrol around all of those structures. One of the biggest challenges for this fire was the direct hand line that we were able to put up uh, from Echo and Delta on the western edge, or Crescent on the eastern edge of the fire of Branch 1. All of that hand line was put in. Um, some of it required us to use uh, helispots and fly crews in, but that line has been completed and crews are continuing to mop up and control along the eastern edge of the fire and grid out for any hot spots. As you work over the top of Williams Canyon <coughs> and down into, excuse me, Majestic Canyon, uh, that hand line was all constructed and put in. Uh, we are mopping up and patrolling behind the structures in and around Majestic Canyon back down across Santiago Canyon Road to Bolero Lookout. Uh, that line was also all completed and put in. And then along Santiago Canyon Road, Williams Canyon, Jackson Ranch, we were able to mop up and patrol behind all of those structures and houses. The two remaining pieces of uh, uncontrolled fire line on the map, once it comes up, will be uh, the area of Delta and Echo along the eastern edge of the fire where we have put in direct hand line, but we were con uh, working to try and reinforce that hand line and make sure that there was no hot spots. Uh, and that is it for situation. Uh, one other thing, I'm sorry, I will go back. Uh, suppression repair has been started. It is being worked on. And there is a section of indirect line that as a contingency we put in on the outside of Division Echo that uh, is along the Santiago Canyon truck trail. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, what we'll 
go around the incident uh, management team four, and we'll go ahead and give each section will give a success and a challenge that we incurred during this incident. PIO. Good morning, Steve Kaufman. I'm an engine company captain with the Ventura County Fire Department. I serve as the PIO for Cal Fire Incident Management Team 4. First of all, we had uh, 12 PIOs assigned to the incident, uh, and uh, the Orange County Fire Authority and the Type 3 team really set us up for success. Uh, there was uh, Tang and then Greg that set up the foundation for us, and they really set up a foundation that uh, led us to uh, complete success. And then once we were able to uh, transition and embed those uh, OCFA folks into our shop, it helped us throughout the entire incident. So thank you, Chief, for that uh, foundation that you already had set up. Uh, through the course of the incident, we did two community meetings. One of them was rather contentious. The next one, uh, one following that was super emotional. And then uh, we put out uh, 10 fact sheets and we had a total so, uh, social media reach of over 13 million. And I think that's a, a attribute to the social media program that you already have set up here in the uh, county. Probably our uh, biggest success was having that type three team and the OCFA foundation set before we got here. Special thanks to uh, Tang. And uh, probably our biggest challenge was the communication in those canyons with those civilians. Not just the day-to-day -day communication challenge that we had, but the PSPS challenge with no cell phones, uh, no computers, no way to uh, actually communicate with those folks. Testing, testing. Testing. There we go. And so uh, early on, we made a decision to, I'm never in the, uh, in the mood of rewarding poor behavior, but they were in the danger zone. We felt we needed to get information out to them. So we did a, a community meeting out in the evacuated area for those folks. And then the following day, we did a community meeting outside of the evacuation area for all the folks that actually heeded our evacuation warnings. At the end of the day, not only our person-to-person -person comments from the community, but our comments on the social media were outstanding. They were supportive of the message that we gave them, the effort that we made to get that information out. And uh, we continue to this day to support the trap lines. As far as unresolved issues, I have spoke with Tang. There are trap lines set up in that community that he plans to uh, keep updated with information over the course of the next few days. And then he has all the uh, social media demographics. End of report. Next liaison. Good morning. My name is Dave Pender. I might serve as my normal day job as a battalion chief of the San Marcos Fire Department in North County, San Diego. And then I also have the pleasure of serving as a liaison team for Cal Fire Incident Management Team 4. So I, I did get direction to stay here at the at the table, I think that's what we're going to do, so forgive me for not standing up. I would really like to echo uh, what my partner said about the stage that was set, that foundation that was set here for us as an incident management team coming in. It, what, speaking specifically of the liaison group, uh, Chief Dia um, um, Capo Bianco, as well as Lieutenant uh, Bingham, really, really did create some impressive momentum as we got going here. As I showed up on that first day, they had cooperators list settled. They, they were in touch with all the people that we really needed. And as the team came in, it was just moving forward and maintaining that momentum. So really, my hat's off to the entire team, as well as the Orange County Sheriff's Department that were very well involved with that process on evacuations and setting up all those contacts that are really necessary for us to make this a successful incident. So my hat's off to that. So um, with this incident and with that foundation was set, we were very fortunate. We did not have m massive challenges. Um, but um, one thing we did run into, and I'm gonna start off with this challenge because it leads into to the success, is that we had some, as um, 
as we talked about from the public information side, these community meetings that most of us were a part of really shed light on how this community is affected. And we had to talk amongst the team, amongst the team members. You know, it's, it's one of those things with anybody in the fire service or public safety, law enforcement, um, we create these barriers and we start moving it sometimes in a very clinical approach to how we do things. And that's a defensive mechanism and it's how we need to do things. But as we get out, and we interact with the community and see what it's truly doing to affect them, this incident and everything that they're going through. It sheds light on, on what our true purpose is. So as we had this community meeting, we recognized that our biggest challenge is working with these cooperators who understandably want to get their work done, but sometimes it's at the expense of timely repopulation and getting restoration done to a point where we can get these people home which is our ultimate goal, taking care of these people and getting them back to some semblance of a normal life. So that was our biggest challenge, getting some of the cooperators, although they had great attitudes and worked hard, but getting them on, on the same page and moving in the same direction with that momentum that was necessary, which now leads into the, the success. So after that community meeting and after really seeing and talking with some of these community members out there, uh, the operations section, safety, public information, we all got together and and had a meeting late night um, over the weekend and say, hey, wh what do we need to do to make this better? And it was a great example of an incident management team, people that care, all coming together, identify how we achieve this. And in doing so, we recognized, hey, there was, a, there was an avenue to really make this a, a smooth transition, getting these people home. We were able the next morning have our restoration repopul repopulation meeting with all the infrastructure, and cooperator uh, folks that were involved, got them all on the same um, page. It was a challenge, no doubt about it, but we were able to achieve it. And by later that afternoon, with support of operations and everybody else, and like I said, the, the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the other um, law enforcement cooperators, we were able to get the entire fire that was affected repopulated later that afternoon. So again, coming back to our purpose, the recognition of the entire team seeing that that truly is our purpose, we see that as our biggest challenge in the liaison shop, not just the liaisons, but everyone working with us to ultimately get these folks home, get all of your community, because that's what it is, looking across the table here, your community home, and I think that was truly the biggest challenge. So I thank you, everyone in this room that was part of that for all the help, and that's the end of the report. All right, thanks. Next, safety. Good morning, uh, Doug Farrell. Um, I'm assigned to Sacramento uh, Co uh, Cooperative uh, Fire Protection as a deputy chief for state and federal programs and IMT for safety. Um, I have to uh, echo um, our largest success was um, Chief Hurdle and, and Captain Williams had completely uh, uh, established a presence within the ICP for safety and on the fire line and had already um, identified the hazards and, and some of the mitigations. So it set us up for a foundation for five trainees on this incident, which is critical for secession planning for any team, uh, type one or type three. So that was a, a, a huge success and the, their assistance and their leadership in, within the shop was much appreciated and, and recognized as well. Um, we had uh, a good presence on, on, the, on the fire line and um, in, within the ICP, the, all the sections that we worked with, uh, operations, liaison, uh, PIO, finance, um, et cetera, planning and logistics. Uh, it was amazing whether it was a CAL FIRE or local government or uh, Orange County uh, Fire Authority uh, personnel. It was, a, uh, it was a complete success in communication and cooperation. Um, the one challenge that we have uh, within the shop, and it's all six teams uh, have struggled with it all, all season, is driving driving speeds of our all ap uh, fire apparatus. And so we, are, we continue to work on that, and we continue to work with um, uh, our LELOs on operations as well to um, curb that as well. And so um, that's our uh, continued uh, struggle and report. 
Okay, thank you. Next, finance. Good morning, Mara Zaver. <coughs> My uh, everyday job is the administrative chief from the MMU unit. And on this incident, uh, a few things is our cost share was determined to be burned acres, and that will be signed today later between CAL FIRE and the U.S. Forest Service. And then any additional outstanding finance will be addressed during the Roths, correction, IROC reconciliation uh, that will happen later on. One of our challenges is not specific to this incident, but it's CAL FIRE in general on our finance processes, and that's something we as the six teams are working through. And one of the successes I would like to highlight is having the Orange County Fire Authority Finance embedded with us. We do appreciate the great communication and collaboration that happened, and uh, look forward to working with you guys on the next one. End of report. Thank you. Next, plans. Good morning, Gabe Garcia, plan section. Um, not to repeat what everyone has said, but normally when we get activated and we arrive at an incident, the first 24, 36, 48 hours is the most challenging time we have because we have to reconcile the resources, try to gather all the information we have uh, to get together to uh, produce a plan. But coming in to a type the organization and having that reflex time to you know, gather yourselves, drive down, and, and coming in and having the incident management team from um, Orange County with those products already available for us, with all that information, it really gave us uh, a, a huge success. And with that, that was one of our successes. Uh, the challenge we have right now is uh, on all across all teams is the COVID mitigations and making sure that everybody gets briefed and we're trying to uh, adhere to all the COVID guidelines with social distancing. So one of the things that has become um, a standard is trying to get the briefings and the meetings and all that broadcasted. And for the team going to a new platform, trying to figure out how, how to manage that was a challenge. Uh, we, uh, they did end up creating a YouTube account and were able to broadcast the briefings and the meetings, which ended up being a, a success. And that's all I have, thanks. All right, thanks. Operations? Good morning, Josh Bischoff, Operations Section Chief. Uh, Battalion Chief in the Riverside Unit and uh, work at the Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base. Uh, this incident, uh, when, I, when we first got sent here, uh, one of my first calls was to Chief Petro. Uh, he was running operations and that quick conversation and then once we arrived on scene, um, getting a briefing from Chief Petro and Chief Covey, being able to spend that operational, first operational period to, to work with them, to come up with a plan and organization uh, was instrumental. Uh, we were able to embed uh, members of the OCFA with their knowledge and experience of the area into every level, operations, branch, division level, and then strike team level. So that was very beneficial and, and a, 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 very, a nice experience. So uh, our biggest success was, um, was that, was being able to embed the OCFA employees into our level of the organization to get their knowledge and experience and, and to be able to work with them and alongside them. And that assisting the transition coming from the team three to team four, and then also yesterday transitioning back to the team and having that fluid and, and seamless, uh, as when we w started to, to de-escalate and be able to determine what resources need to remain, having them embedded in our shop was a huge success. Uh, one of our challenges was something we continue to see on a lot of incidents was uh, overhead line supervision. Uh, being able to get uh, division supervisors, operation branch directors, uh, show, saw to be a challenge. A lot of it had to come through name requests and, uh, and working because uh, that, that level of supervision is difficult to, to get through the system. So, thank you. Thank you. Next, logs. Good morning, Matt Reich, Logistics Section Chief for IMT4. My day job is a fire captain, um, trying to give the good vibes at our CAL FIRE Training Center assigned there as an instructor. Um, our biggest success is, is the same as my peers here, although I'll start it with a thank you. Thank you for Orange County um, supporting the teams, working groups, cadres, a lot of familiar faces, and a lot of good laughs along with the good work we've done. Um, so I'll start off with that thanks. Thanks for always uh, supporting those extra positions that we can get. With that, um, success will go along with the IMT three or type organization was there and in place. A lot of trainees were there and um, we got to keep those trainees, which allowed us to not have to 
search deep for our own personnel orders for overhead spots and um, those challenges that sometimes we face um, trying to get people out of units and, and then they're quick. Those people are already in place and, and I want to say we had 40 some odd people assigned to the incident from, from Orange County Fire Authority. So thank you. We kept as many trainees on as possible and along with the Silverado incident and ours, um, there's a lot of good work being done and um, some lot, a lot of good ideas with that property. So. Our biggest success was already having so many things in place. And I think we built on the last incident that was here just, what, five or six weeks ago. Um, we had to dig really deep for a challenge. Um, the challenge was because Orange County is so robust and they made those appropriate orders, um, some of those orders were kind of overlapped and uh, we didn't miss. We had to reconcile a lot multiple times with uh, Expanded and our, our great ECC support team that came. Luckily, it was the same support team that came during the Silverado incident, so there was already familiar faces and a good bond and things like that. So that was just uh, multiple days of, of small challenges, trying to make sure we had the right equipment here at the appropriate time. Thank you. All right, next, incident commander. Hey, good morning. My name is Darrell Laws. I'm an assistant chief or division chief for CAL FIRE up in the Siskiyou unit up north, and I serve as the incident commander training on Team 4. So I'll start off with the challenge. So running a fire all this summer, uh, not just the fire season itself, it's been challenging. It's been taxing on our people. Uh, Team four has probably been out between 80 and 100 days. So we started in uh, early March, uh, March, April, and then uh, just rolled right into fire season. And uh, we were busy the whole time. Uh, we did a, about a 45 day stint in Butte County. So it's uh, been pretty taxing on the folks. So. Running a fire in this uh, COVID-19 uh, environment for us is, it was a challenge on this incident uh, as, a, as the other ones were. Um, the one thing that uh, I will say about that challenge is the uh, OCFA uh, Type 3 team met it head on. Uh, they already had mitigation me measures in place. We were able to build on those and uh, expand and make sure that we had uh, adequate space in, in between individuals. We had uh, <clears throat> plenty of places to uh, uh, wash your hands, uh, mask required, and uh, they did a fantastic job. And uh, that will lead right into my success uh, uh, for, uh, for the ICs would be that uh, having that Type 3 team, uh, very robust and, uh, and uh, professional. And when we came in, uh, we've worked with several of the people that are uh, uh, within the department here in Orange County. Um, they're on our teams. and. Um, we were really able to uh, meet them with open arms and uh, relationships were already established. So we were able to foster those relationships and can you continue those on. And uh, you've got a good program there. And, uh, and I hope to see that that continues on. Uh, we uh, enjoy having those folks on our, our teams. And then to the, uh, the, the uh, US Forest Service folks from the Cleveland, it was uh, very easy to work with uh, the folks and uh, from uh, Orange County uh, Sheriff's Department. Um, seamless, easy, uh, repopulation. The shortest repopulation um, uh, meetings, I guess, three meetings to get people back into their homes, and that's a you know a credit to you for uh, making sure that we jump through the hoops and make sure people are able to get back to their uh, their homes or property safely. And I'll just finish out with one last thing: is uh, for Team Four, and we say this quite a bit, is how we measure success for Team Four, is that uh, if there was a need, if you'd have us back, and I'd ask that question. So. Thank you very much for uh, letting us serve. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Next, the management objectives that we um, employed while we were out in the, on this incident was to provide and maintain for public and first responder safety, utilizing the incident safety analysis process to ensure the COVID-19 precautions and best practices are met at all times, to protect values at risk, including infrastructures, improvement, private and public lands, natural and cultural resources, and then foster and maintain re relationships with all cooperators and stakeholders to ensure the coordinated and timely accurate release of public information and to be fiscally responsible for all management of the fire and fire suppression tactics. Also, our main control objectives during this incident were to keep the fire north of Live Oak Road Keep the fire south of Black Star Canyon. Keep the fire east of the 241 toll road. And then keep the fire west of the North Main Divide. Next, we'll, we'll go into the 7700 
transfer command form. This is the transition back to the, the local control. Uh, the incident management team has satisfactorily met the goals of the agency administrator. Uh, most of the operational section personnel have been released or in the process of um, being demoed. The request for uh, retrograde has been completed. A majority of the incident base has been taken down or in the process. Um, Mark Eddy and Steve Hartle will be the individuals for the fire report. Finance section uh, package will be completed and, and handed over to Rochelle Leach out of Riverside Unit. Um, ORC Wildland uh, Resource Planner Dave Erickson will remain assigned to the incident to ensure that the fire suppression repair is complete and finalized. Um, the low liaison offer Officer has resolved all known issues and concerns. Uh, incident evaluation for all personnel have been completed and sent to their home units or training officers. And then the incident commander and agency administrators or, um, have agreed upon all human relation, uh, human relation issues has been completed. And then training technical specialist has completed all documentations and we'll forward them to the agency administrators. Um, and then the continuing safety issues. There are no known issues at this time that need to be addressed or con um, completed. With that, we'll go ahead and uh, move over to some comments from the U.S. Forest Service. Good morning. Um, by all accounts, uh, and talking to all of our uh, command staff on the on the forest, um, this was just a seamless incident. Um, I think, as uh, folks over here have uh, have talked about, um, the the way was well paved already by the OCFA, and uh, everything that we needed uh, was dealt with uh, immediately, and sometimes dealt with before we even re realized we needed it. Um, just good cooperation across the board. Um, really happy with the way the COVID situation was uh, dealt with by the incident and uh, all things considered, we really have no complaints whatsoever. You guys did a great job. Appreciate it. And a report. All right. Thank you. Next we'll go on from the Orange County Sheriff's. Uh, thank you. And thank you for having us here. Um, I'd like to just thank uh, my counterparts at Orange County Fire Authority for for those of you who don't know, kind of the history between uh, Orange County Sheriff and Orange County Fire, it's been a little contentious in the you know past uh, 10 years or so. But we had, we were fortunate enough to have a, a training event that they put on uh, a couple weeks prior to the Silver Auto Fire, which really helped uh, start formulating some relationships. And then the Silver Auto Fire came, and for for us in in the Sheriff's Department, we probably don't have a ton of experience in like the ICS on these major incidents. So um, that became a huge uh, uh, kind of training and uh, real life experience for us. And I think it helped formulate uh, some good relationships uh, between myself and our command staff with uh, fire authority folks. And we learned a ton. Uh, we identified some, some issues in, in my area specifically, which is the canyon areas as far as communication situations and some mapping issues, which we need to, uh, you know, rectify as uh, soon as possible to help us with uh, responding to the, to the area and, uh, you know, completing evacuations and whatnot. Um, I, just, I just think overall, uh, despite the loss of, of the homes uh, that were up there, um, you know, after we went to that, that second meeting and got to talk to some of those folks and just feel the emotion that they, that they were feeling and, despite their loss, how thankful they were for, you know, all of us being able to respond and, and help them. So I think uh, overall, uh, you know, the situation was handled appropriately and we, we, I think, pulled together and did a really good job. So uh, thank you for, for enlightening us, me specifically, on a lot of uh, uh, ICS type stuff. And, you know, hopefully if there is a, a next event, we'll be even better prepared. Thank you.
Thank you. Next, we'll move into the Riverside Unit Chief with Bill Weather. Thank you very much. I want to echo a lot of what uh, the lieutenant said. I appreciate it. I kind of took my thunder out of my notes here about a great cooperative effort, and I wanted to thank everyone here that was here. Team Four, thank you very much for coming in here and helping out again and doing a great job. Uh, I don't know if we should be doing uh, any more lunch today. It seems like every time we plan a good lunch in Riverside, you get a major fire, uh, Brian, so maybe, maybe we shouldn't do that again. But um, I think with the leadership that Orange County has shown through law enforcement, as well as working with our cooperative partners with the Forest Service, and creating these uh, great relationships prior to coming to an emergency has been terrific, and this just shows another good example of that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to the Orange County Fire Authority Fire Chief. Oh, there he is. Thank you. Yeah, Bill, we're just going to have to have you come over for lunch, and you just have to pay. That's, <laughs> you know. Only dust flies out of that wallet. Right. <laughs> but you're a big tipper. Anyway, so uh, I just, again, want to say thank you to uh, Chief Russell and, and all of uh, the IMT. Um, you know, we uh, early on, we, we debated back and forth whether or not this was something that, that our IMT could manage, and, and quite possibly, I, I think we could have, but with the threat to the forest and everything else, it was kind of a tweener for us, but I'm really glad we opted and erred on, on bringing you guys in. Um, can't thank you enough. Uh, we appreciate it. A um, couple uh, things, I guess, and maybe it's an offline conversation, Dave, with... with I'm really um, I'm interested in hearing the backstory of the division supervisors and the the ops folks. I mean, it would seem with you know uh, the little activity going on in the state that that would not be an issue. I can see if there's there's multiple instances the competition for line overhead, but I I wouldn't think that'd be an issue. So I'd be interested in the backstory, maybe maybe offline if there's something I can say or do as the fire scope chair. I'll, I'll certainly bring that up um, at our upcoming meeting. Um, I guess the only concern that I have, and maybe this is a conversation with Daryl and your folks, is you know, the, um, the landscape above you know, the communities there in Silverado is largely gone. And that, uh, that, that Kenya has a, has a history. In 1969, uh, many lost their lives when mud moved through there. And, and sometime later, I believe, a boulder came off the hill and, and killed a young girl. And so that place has a, a history of... Um, with rain or without rain, and, and uh, I'm really interested in hearing what we're going to do about, you know, soil stabilization, if anything, above those communities. But uh, we can talk about that maybe at another time. But I, again, I just want to say thank you. Uh, appreciate, um, and hopefully, it sounds like we were hospitable, and we like to make everybody comfortable when they're here. And um, appreciate all the hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on with comments from the Southern Region. With, uh, Assistant Region Chief, Chief Barley. Oh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Glenn Barley, Assistant Region Chief. Just like to take a moment to uh, to recognize Chief Russell. Um, this is probably, uh, most likely, his last hurrah as the uh, incident management, uh, leading the incident management team four. So, uh, thank you, Chief Russell, for your leadership to Team Four, and uh, as you transition to your role as the Unit Chief in Tehama Glen, uh, we wish you all the uh, best success there. So. So thank you. And Team 4, I'm, I know that you all will, uh, as your next leader is selected, that you will support that individual and uh, continue to grow as your team with that new individual and, and uh, produce the fantastic product you're doing. So thank you. Um, you know, uh, 2020 has been the year that just keeps on giving, right? And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's certainly brought some challenges. Uh, this year has been a very busy fire season and it's an extended fire season that we're still experiencing but i firmly believe that with the challenges we also have the ability to create opportunities and uh, i think that that's true here uh, both the previous fires as well as this one chief fantasy you took uh, the, the step of faith to bring in our incident management teams um, and i hope that uh, we've been able to uh, combine both your your type 3 team as well as the, our incident management teams and I hope that uh, that meshing of our folks on both sides has been beneficial, uh, sharing the, the experiences and uh, training that we all have. 
I firmly believe we're all stronger because of that sharing uh, experience, training, uh, all of that as we move forward. So um, uh, hopefully we, we've taken a, a challenge and created some opportunity out of it. So, so thank you for that and uh, looking forward to uh, continuing that relationship and building that as we move forward. Um, I know I don't know if Chief Fulcher is on the on the line, but he certainly uh, would have wanted to be here, but was uh, had to be in another location this morning, uh, and also for Chief Porter, uh, I know that he is was watching the the uh, dynamics and the uh, incidents down here closely and keeping an eye on that. So he would they would also echo that uh, we appreciate the faith that you showed in our teams to bring him in and and uh, execute the job. And if there's any questions, concerns, we certainly want to hear that. If it's offline, uh, we welcome all that input so we do a better job in the future as well. So with that, uh, uh, again, thank you. Uh, always a pr privilege to come out and see uh, you and your, your staff. Uh, you have a fantastic group of uh, chief officers and firefighters, so um, kudos to you. And now I could really use some help from you uh, to help solve a little feud going on amongst some of my senior leadership and um, uh, chief Meacham and Chief Weiser would really like to know who your favorite chief is. <laughs> All right, with that, we'll go ahead and move into the closing comments with the incident management team for incident commander. I'm going to go up top. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eddie Moore. My day job, I uh, am a deputy chief at Southern Region uh, in charge of tech services, and I serve as a deputy incident commander for IMT4. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to say thank you, Chief Fennessy. Um, thank you um, to the U.S. Forest Service, um, all my unified partners, sheriffs. Um, it's been an amazing tour. Our communication, uh, I think, was spot on. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, you saved our bacon. I think you took the brunt of a lot of... Uh, uh, the issues at our community meetings, but um, I have to say your professionalism and the way that you interacted with the citizens was spot on. And I think that uh, really, uh, really brought face to the, the level of service that uh, Orange County provides to the citizens. And I do truly think that they were um, really pleased with the service, just upset with the, the scenario. Um, I'll start in, uh, uh, you know, December 3rd, Chief Fennessy, when uh, we did our end brief and it was identified, you know, Five weeks ago, we had an incident um, that was similar, and those folks were evacuated, and, and we knew right off the bat that it was going to be uh, a very touchy subject, and I think one of your leaders' intent was to ensure, number one, was the firefighter safety. Number two was to respect the community and get them back in as fast as we could. So I'll go with the firefighter safety first. Um, you know, our safety record on this incident was phenomenal. Uh, a couple minor injuries. Uh, but, but in totality, knowing the terrain and the difficulties that we have um, with uh, rollout and everything in Silverado Canyon um, pose some significant threats to our firefighters and the community. So um, we continued to push the safety messages and the issues uh, that we had out there and the firefighters paid attention to the team. The next piece um, was fiscal responsibility and I think that's um, where I lean into um, Ron, your leadership and the Type 3 organization uh, that was um, here when we got here. Um, you know, Ron, I was able to tie in with you right away, um, get the information, identify any political considerations, um, anything that we needed to deal with and, and not be a surprise. And, and your information that you provided was, was, uh, was spot on and, and led us to success. Um, and, and leading to that was being able to embed the Type 3 organization uh, with us, the knowledge, the experience, the lay of the land, the community involvement, um, that is what made us successful to be done with what we're doing today and have our communities repopulated where they live. So um, I want to say thank you to um, Chief, your Type 3 team, your organization for setting us up for success. So we talked about uh, the struggles with overhead assignments, and it seems that that, that is our, our struggles over the, the number of years. Um, but looking at the documents, 67 trainees on, on a seven-day incident with a 12% qualification, that says a lot. Um, that says a lot for your commitment, Chief Fennessy, to um, allowing your folks to 
um, commit to the type one teams um, to run the way that they do here in the county, um, that, that's a huge testament to the success and where we're gonna be in fire scope and the amount and level of uh, um, qualified individuals we'll have for future fire assignments. And I'll close with this as I will say thank you again for the hospitality. Um, it has been uh, top notch, um, you know, coming in and doing team dinners, having facilities to be able to operate in, especially in the COVID environment. And, and I'll, uh, my last comment is, um, you know, every time I come here, um, I meet somebody new, but the relationships is, is uh, next to none in this county and, and being able to show up and, and know everybody by a first name and, and meet somebody new is, is um, really something special. And um, thank you to um, you and your staff for um, the relationships that we continue to have. So in the report. All right, thank you. That will conclude the transition meeting. You can go ahead and turn your radios, cell phones back on, and have a good day. Thank you.